Hi, today I'm gonna show you how to knit this set in sleeve sweater. Let's get started. Okay, guys, please check my description box for all the details. I put some links which you might need such as my website for downloading my written pattern and other links so today i am going to show you this set in sleeve top down sweater it's completely seamless a lot of people probably think how you can knit complete seamless top down, not raglan sweater. Okay, so this is raglan sweater. I knitted it before. Knit neck and adding a little bit, you know, fabric back of the neck with show roll technique. Then after that, you divide by four parts, which is, you know, raglan line, two raglan line out front, then separate front and two sleeves, then two line at the back for the back piece as well. And you knit until your desired length, which underneath of your armpit, then separate the uh, sleeve from yoke and finish the uh, body. Then come back to sleeve and finish the uh, sleeve. This is the uh, raglan sweater, okay? You know where the increase part, right? So right there, that's raglan. So what's the difference? I am going to increase on top of the uh, your shoulder line that's the huge difference okay set in sleeve you will increase only front and back then start increasing sleeve after you finish increasing for front and back then rest of them are pretty much same separate the uh, sleeves from the uh, yoke and finish the uh, body then finish the uh, sleeves. This can be very complicated because depend on the, the the person, like your body size, your body trade, or your preference. What do you mean by that? Well, you know. Some people has very narrow shoulder. Some people the other way around, right? And sometimes you know the the the, the person is so skinny. However, the bust is quite big, something like that. So today I just want to show you how to knit this. So you gotta learn how to construct this sweater first. Then, you know, adjust here and there. So why don't we knit very basic? You know, for some people, it could be drop shoulder a little bit or maybe a little bit oversized, but that's fine, okay? I just want you to uh, learn how to knit this, you know, sweater. All right, so you definitely need to knit your swatch for your gauge, okay? If you want, you can actually um, knit one shoulder line for your sample. It's really up to you. But you can knit just a regular swatch count, stitch count across, and 
rows for height. Okay? Also, I want you to measure few parts. Okay? First of all, your back neck length without the rib. And I want to make the a bigger neck opening. So I actually measure a little, you know, below the uh, neckline. Just like that. For now. Okay? And I believe I started with 9 inch or something. Also, I want you to measure widest part around the uh, bust area area also the uh, shoulder line then let's do a little bit of math okay okay so here is my math gauge template okay if you haven't downloaded yet maybe you want to do that now because this is quite useful you don't really have to do little math anymore okay um, okay, anyway, let's input my information. In this red section, you have to input your swatch information. Okay, so mine is 4 inch by 4 inch. And I have a 22 stitches with some 4 inch and 30 rows with some 4 inch. Okay. This is my gauge. And this side of the section, you already have your desired length and all that, right? So you have to put numbers here to find out your cast on number, rows, you have to knit, stuff like that. So top part, it says find out stitch count from the length. If you want to find out your cast on number, the top section you need, okay? I have a 9 inch to start my desired length, right? So 9. This is yellow section. So let's go check the yellow section here. 49.5. So if I want to start with 9 inch, I have to start with 50 cast on. Okay, please remember this number. And I have to put 18. What's 18? This is my back of the chest line, only half size. Okay, which means the total should be 36 inches. I kind of want to knit bigger size around the body. Okay, I didn't want to knit fit, fit sweater this time so 18 that's perfect for me so yellow section and see yellow section 99 so about 98 i kind of want to have even number easy to you know do a little math okay anyway so let's do a little math here my target Chest stitch count is 98, right? Minus my cast on number to start with 50. Equal 48. What is 48? This is the stitch count I have to increase. Okay? I have to increase. So 50 cast on to start and increasing every row until you increase 48 stitches total to make 98 stitch you know what i'm saying so 48 now divided by 2 why divided by 2 because every row i am going to increase two stitch at a time which means I have to repeat increasing 24 times, which means I am going to knit at least 24 rows to increase 
total of 48. Did you get that? So let's go back 24 rows, 24 times. Okay? Go up. 24 rows. My gauge, 4 inch, I have a 30 rows. Close. And I actually, I'm going to add two rows for preparation. That's going to be 26, so 4 inch. And why I have to check this one? Because of my shoulder line. Okay? I will explain later. Okay? But this number, okay, should close to your desired shoulder line. I will explain it to you later. If you want to, you know, knit drop shoulder design, it doesn't really matter. Well, it does, but it doesn't. Anyway, this is just, um, you know, just checking, you know. I will explain when I'm knitting. That'll be easier for me because you probably don't understand what I'm doing. So you just I just want you to find out your cast on number, also the target number and how many times you have to increase stuff like that. So let's move on to actual knitting. Okay. Now I found my cast on number 50 and you have to add four extra stitch so 50 plus 4 is 54 I cast on 54 with contrast scrap yarn contrast color of scrap yarn so I use green right so 54 to start now I cut the end tail, then tie the little knot. I want to use knitting side for the uh, first row. So I push the cast to the other side. So I can use knitting side. I mean, you know, right side, I should say. And next two rows will be preparation row so row number one all knit and adding marker knit one everybody same okay and place the marker and after the marker knit one okay then place the marker so Second stitch from the beginning and last, I want you to sandwich with your marker. So, second stitch, markers, sandwich, like that, and knit all the way down, okay, to second stitch from last. I have to do the same thing. You have to add markers there we go this is end of the first row okay there we go second from last i have to sandwich that stitch so put one marker knit one and place one more marker then knit last one and turn the project Okay, and then all pearl. Those two rows are preparation row. And after this, increasing starts. Okay. Okay, so this is increasing on right side for only back piece, which means I'm going to knit in flat right side and wrong side and I will 
increase every row. Right side, also wrong side. I don't usually increase on pro wrong side, but I will this time. Okay, so let's do that together. Always increase outside of the marker. Okay, not inside of the marker yet. So, right side of the marker and left side of the marker. And when you increase on wrong side, same thing. Outside of the marker. And I usually say, if you want to increase right side of the marker, make one right, left side, make one left. But it's a little bit different this time. So you got to watch very carefully. Okay? So knit one, I mean, until the marker. Okay? And then now, right side of the marker, right? I am going to make one left. Make one left. So picking up the uh, running thread and hook onto left needle and make sure running thread is shifting left side and there is V connection always out front or back. Okay? And this time, make one left, always back. There is the connection. I mean, run thread connection right there. Okay? And always knit that V connection, but the back piece is pearl. So you put needle straight in like that. Okay? Back loop you have to knit. Okay? Then knit that back loop. There we go. I increase one stitch outside of the uh, marker and slide the marker. Knit one in between marker. Oh, always one for now. And then left side of the uh, marker, but I am going to do make one right this time. Okay? So V connection out front, then I have to knit front loop this time because V connection is out front. And knitting way. There you go. That's it. And knit all the way down to the other side. And same thing. Right side of the marker, you have to do make one left. Let's do that together. Bigger. Okay, make one left on right side of the marker. Picking up the uh, running thread, hook on to left side. Make sure running thread is shifting left. And V connection is at the back on the wrong side. So you have to knit back loop. And back is pearl, so needle straight in. There we go. I'm sorry, you can't really see. There we go. Back loop. Slide the marker, knit one, and then slide the other marker. And now left side, make one right. Okay, opposite this time. So make one right. V connection is out front, so knit front loop. Then knit until end. There's only one stitch this time, so knit one. There we go. And now turn around. Increase on wrong side for the back piece. Same thing. Pro until the marker. Okay. And now right side of the marker on wrong side same direction so make one right pearl this time so shifting right way this time and then straight 
in because the connection is out front and this is pro side so straight in and then pearl one there did you get that and then pearl slide the marker and this time make one left on the left side of the marker okay so same direction on the wrong side and now v connection is at the back right so you have to pearl however from back way with back loop you know what i'm saying because back side is knitting side right so kind of knitting way this is really hard well it's not but you need to practice maybe or you need to get used to kind of back loop from back way okay put the needle in and there you go put in yeah inside did you get that and out front make a pearl i'll show you one more time so don't worry and all pearl until the other side of the marker okay there we go this is wrong side pearl until the marker and make one right pearl same direction on the wrong side so picking up the running thread hook onto left needle and connection v connection is out front so this is pearl side so pearl one just put the needle straight in and pearl one in between markers slide the marker and left side of the marker on wrong side make one left so picking up the uh, the running thread hook on and kind of see at the back there you go v shape kind of back loop back way there we go like that push the needle in and in between the uh, the the stitch come out and pearl that's about it okay so you just repeat row number one and row number two until your desired length Desire length means when you hit your target stitch count for back piece, which is 98 for me, that's done. I repeated 12 times, which is 24 rows. Okay, so I hit my target stitch count for back. And as you can see, there is the line. This is the uh, shoulder line. When I was increasing, that's the line I was creating. That's why I kind of made sure, you know, while I'm increasing, you know, how much I'm going to create that shoulder line. Now, I am going to create sleeves right on the uh, shoulder line this side and obviously the other side now you must think about the neck opening as well i'm going to create the neck curve within 16 rows which is about two inch for me if this is big enough for you this is the time you have to create neck curve if not, you can adjust this number and you will know how to adjust later on if you watch everything. All right. For me, I need enough. So about two inch, that's going to be big enough. Right. So at the same time, you have to create sleeves and neck curb. But no more increasing for back piece it's busy but easy now you have to put the marker the uh, shoulder line has to be in the middle and take three stitch and put the uh, marker all right so sleeve 
you're going to start with three stitch. And also, I just told you I am going to create the neck curve. Neck curve, both ends. I have to increase. All right? So you just follow my written instruction. All right? And for the sleeve, I am going to increase inside of the sleeve marker. No outside. All right? So we can do that together. So don't worry about it. IFR, which is increase front row. Row number one, knit one to start. And right after knit one, I'm going to increase one stitch there with make one right. And I'm going to show you because you already know, right? Knit one and make one right. That's it. And you just knit until last one stitch. But now I have to show you for the sleeve, right? There we go. I knit until sleeve marker. I kind of switch, okay? So I have a three stitches in between marker. Slide the marker. Left side of the marker. Now, same direction. So, make one left. For the sleeve, increase same direction. And I just did make one left. So, knit until the other side of the marker. Again, for the sleeve, inside of the marker, you have to increase. So, this is right side of the marker. So, you have to do make one right. Okay? There's actually the reason why, but, you know, I'm not going to talk about it because it's going to be too, you know, long. Anyway, so no more increasing for back piece, right? So, just increase with some sleeve marker. Now I have five stitches and it's going to get bigger and bigger. All right. And then let's knit until the other side of the sleeve. I do exactly same thing. So you probably know you have to increase inside of the marker with same direction. So here comes slide the marker and then left side of the marker make one left all right this is a little bit busy but you know the what i'm doing is quite simple okay so knit until the marker and this is right side of the marker so make one right that's it and you just have to you know increasing until your desired stitch count anyway you need to increase one more right that's the other side of the uh, front piece which is make one left then knit last one and wrong side or pearl. Okay, for the uh, front neck opening increasing, repeat five times, which is 10 rows. Okay, for neck opening increase, five times total, total of 10 rows. For the uh, sleeve, you just keep doing. Okay. And let me talk about the uh, neck opening a little bit here. After 10 rows, five, you know, increasing both sides, I am going to increase three stitch each end, then purl, increase four stitch, then purl, and then increase five stitch for both end and purl. 
which is six rows I'm going to knit. You know what I'm saying? This is the reason why I said 16th row. I'm going to finish the uh, neck opening. So if you want to, you know, adjust little number, you can do it. Okay? So here and there, you know, you can adjust numbers to, you know, customize your sweater. All right? Okay, now I am going to tell you my detail. I just actually increased the uh, five stitches each side, which is 10 stitches total, right? And I have to count. For front piece, I have 29 stitch each side. 29 times 2 is 58. So I have total of 58 stitches for front. Also, I have to count back piece. Well, I don't have to count, but I have 96 stitch count for back piece. It was 98, but I took one stitch each side for sleeve. So 96 minus 58 front piece is 38 stitches, which I have to increase because back piece and front piece, the stitch count should be same number. And I just told you I am going to add 3, 4, 5 cast on each side from now. So times 2 is 24 stitch I'm going to increase. 38 minus 24 is 14 stitches. So I am going to add 14 stitches to connect both sides of the front piece. That's what I'm going to do. Again, if you want to, you know, change the uh, number, this is the time you can actually change the number. All right? If you're not sure, please ask me. Just leave your comment below, and I'll try to help you. Okay? So now, after the uh, five stitch increasing, I am going to start making cast on so I can add more numbers. You can cast on after the pearl row, but I just want to make sure, you know, on the right side, I want you to increase because, you know, pearl side, uh, no increasing. So this is kind of, you know, the other way around, cast on. So make sure about how you make a cast, okay? You have to look my finger movement. There you go. The working yarn goes around my thumb, not front to back. Kind of, you know, going to back of my thumb and coming out from front. If you're not sure, you can, you know, go back and watch again. All right? But I'll show you a couple more times. Don't worry. And then... Row number three, I would say, starts, cast on, and then all knit until the end. However, don't forget about increasing inside of the sleeve, okay? So anyway, the front, as a front piece increase, I just cast on three, right? And all knit. And at the end, I am going to increase three more. So just keep increasing for sleeve, all right? Okay, so this is end of the row number three. I have to add three cast, right? Because, you know, both sides has to be the same. So one, two, three. And then 
turn, wrong side, just opera. And again, let me actually、uh, say this. If you are needing much smaller size, you might want to change you know, these numbers. It's really up to you. You can、um, cast on two and three and four, something like that. You don't really have to you know, add three, four, five. You know, it's really up to your size. If you're needing much bigger size, you know, same. You can start with cast on four or five, something like that. Anyway, I'll show you、um, adding cast four right on the、uh, row five. Okay, so remember one. The working yarn. It's a little you know, tricky, but once you get used to, you know how. There you go. That's it. And you just keep doing until row number eight. After row number eight, the neck curve has done. Now I want to connect both ends, you know, the front, right, and left. Right? And I already did the、uh, math, so I'm just going to add 14 cast on to connect both ends. Right? And I just want to you know, make sure okay, I have 96 stitch count. And then now I have 80. Two stitches for both f r o n t okay, together. So 96 minus 82 is 14. So I am going to add 14 cast. All right, and there you go. Just add 14 cast. If it's not easy, you can actually. Add 14 at the end of row number eight. Pretty much the same, right? And then start knitting. Again, this is end of the neck curve. That doesn't mean you can end for your sleeve increasing. No, this is just. Neck opening. So just after you add cast, keep knitting until the other side. After this, I am going to knit in round. Okay, so I add biggie marker. Well, you know. I could add biggie marker later on, but、uh, you know, I did anyway. Okay, so you know, again, 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 do not forget to increase your sleeves, which is inside of the sleeve marker. Okay, just keep knitting. From now on, I'm going to knit in round. And One thing I want to make sure、um, now you're needing only right side, right? So、um, it was increase on right side and just pearl on wrong side, the, but there's no wrong side. So you have to make sure, you know, row number one increase and row number one,、uh, row number two just knit, no increase. Okay, so you might have to, you know,、um, think about that because now it's all knitting side and don't just increase every row. All right? So if you're knitting different sizes, you can adjust those numbers. All right? So let's finish increasing sleeves. I 
increase total of 29 times. Okay? And I count the, uh, the stitch count for sleeves, and this is big enough for me. So now I am going to separate sleeves from the uh, yoke. Then whenever I connect, okay, I am going to add four to eight stitches under the armpit. So again, the sleeve has to be long enough, comes around armpit. Also, when you start knitting only for body, I am going to add some cast. So this is the last chance to adjust stitch count. Okay? Pretty much full sleeves. The body itself is should be big enough, but you know, if you want to change your mind, this is the time. Okay? So, let's start knitting. And this is actually same as raglan line. So, it's quite easy. So, knit all the way down to the sleeve marker. No more increasing, right? And remove the sleeve marker because I'm not going to increase any more sleeves. And then, with the tapestry needle and scrap yarn, you're going to transfer all the sleeve stitch onto scrap yarn because from now on, I'm going to knit only for body. And then later on, I'm going to start knitting my sleeves. So just transfer all the sleeve stitch. Okay? Here it comes. This is almost end of transferring. Okay? And tightly a knot, you know, loosely, and leave it there, okay? If you want to try it on, you can actually try it on, right? So don't use the uh, stitch holder, all right? Anyway, so just tidy a knot loosely. Then now I am going to connect one side of the, uh, the front and back piece. Now I'm going to add few stitches. And again, I am going to add eight cast in between front and back. You know, the body part, I had enough stitch. But for sleeve, I need a little bit more, you know, stitch. So, you know, I could add only four stitch, but I decide eight stitch. If you want to add more, you can do that. However, make sure this is not only for body or not only for sleeve, for both sides, right? However, if you add too many and later on you regret, you can actually decrease, right? So don't worry about it too much, okay? Four to eight would be ideal, but you can add 12, 16, whatever. After you add new cast, just start knitting for back piece. That's it. And you have to do exactly the same thing for the other side of the sleeve, right? After this, it's so easy, okay? The increase in back and front and uh, the neck curve, after that, nothing to worry about. Just knit, knit, knit until your desired length. Again, this is only for body, right? So if you want to uh, knit short, you can do that. Or if you want to, you know, knit long, you can do that. And I actually knit a little bit longer than usual. 
Okay, this is the reason why I kind of want to have a bigger, you know, uh, chest size. Okay, anyway, I knit quite long. Okay, I think I knitted about ten and a half inch from the separation. There you go, almost eleven. Well, actually, past the eleven inch. And now. I'm going to start knitting rib, and the rib should be repeat of knit to purl two. So, if you need to adjust the uh, number, you know, uh, you can do that before you start ribbing. Okay, and I change the uh, needle to three point five millimeter needle. Half size down, then start ribbon again. Repeat of knit to purl two. So on the first row, you have to be very careful. Otherwise, you know you're gonna ruin the uh, the rib, right? From second row, you just you know uh, knit over knit stitch and purl over purl stitch. And I only knit seven rows. You know, I kind of want to have short rib this time. And after the rib, you can bind off. You can use half size bigger needle to um, have stretchy, you know, bind off. Or you can just use uh, the needle, whatever you're using, because, you know, the body, uh, it's big enough. So... It doesn't have to be stretchy, but for sleeve, for sure, you know, I'm using bigger needle to bind off. There we go. Short rib, which is all good for me. And I already knit my sleeves. Okay, that's actually what I'm going to show you from now on. I decrease a little bit. Okay, so let's talk about that after I connect. So this is under armpit. Do you remember I add eight cast, right? And whenever, you know, you connect the, uh, the sleeve, there's always, always gap, you know, before and after the cast on. So I'm trying to, you know, show you to minimize that gap. You can't really close everything, but, you know, I'll try. So I want you to place the marker after you transfer all the stitch onto needle. First of all, one marker just before the last original. Okay? So needing from this side, right? So the last stitch will be this side. So put the marker just before one last original. Okay? And I'm actually having the yellow marker temporary. That's the center of new cast. I add eight stitches. So one, two, three, four. That's the, you know, the half. And five, six, seven, eight. So right on the fifth cast, that's where I am going to start. Okay? So I temporarily put in the, the marker, but... I want you to actually put the uh, marker later, okay? So, yeah, the last new cast, okay? Just before the last new cast, I am going to add marker. And between last and first original stitch, there's a big gap. And that's where I want you to actually knit up two extra besides the uh, new cast. And again, if you pick up one thread like that, it's going to be a huge gap. So when you knit up those two extra, I want you to knit up one more thread with it. And make sure when you pull, yeah, try any thread. There you go. And make sure it's smaller gap. 
Okay, there we go. That, that thread I like. Okay. So if you knit up with other thread, the you can actually minimize the gap a little bit. And the other side, same thing. Okay. So there we go. Let's start knitting up. In the center of new cast. For me, number five of new cast. And I leave longer tail because I might have to close the gap a little bit, right? So knit up right on the uh, new cast. One, two, three. And I told you I want you to add one marker just before the last new cast. So I add one more marker, right? And then knit up right above the uh, new cast. So this is eighth cast, right? And then two extra knit up in between last new cast and original first. So, and do you remember, don't pick just one thread, okay? Use, you know, other thread around that area, okay? It's hard. Use the, uh, the, the whatever tool you need, you know, cable, needle, or whatever. So, two. There we go. And then knit up. Again, you can't really close, close, but you can definitely minimize the uh, gap around that area. There we go. And one more. You got to do same thing. One, that one, and one at the bottom. Just knit up. And then this is the, uh, the original stitch you just knit until the other side and you do exactly same thing so here comes the other side so knit and slide the marker and knit last one all right and right after the last stitch the extra knit up come in so remember there's the, uh, the, the thread, running thread, those two, right? And one below or beside or whatever, you know, near that thread. Just pick up and make sure which thread is, you know, good with that extra. There you go. It's really up to you. So using the uh, cable needle or, you know, uh, whatever. Whatever easier for you. There we go. Knit up. Just take your time. And one more. So I am actually knit up two extra each, right? And then I am going to decrease. So... To minimize or close the uh, gap, the easiest way is knit up extra and then decrease extra. You know, that's the best method to close the gap. So after you knit up extra, you just finish knitting up right on the, uh, the new cast. I started from the, uh, the center of the uh, new cast, so you have to knit up the other half, right? And connection hasn't done yet, okay? You just knit up, and now you decrease to close that gap. That's what you have to do from now, which is easy, okay? So now the center of the new cast will be my and your New begin. So I add begin marker, right? And knit until marker, which is yellow marker for me. 
So after the yellow marker, it's a, a one stitch with new cast and two extra, right? So with last new cast and one extra stitch, SSK, decrease. And another extra and first original knit two together. So now you decrease two. So I minimize the gap. And you do exactly same thing for the other side after the red marker, okay? Right after the uh, red marker, there's the, uh, the last original stitch, right? And then two extra. So last original and first extra stitch, you do SSK. Slip, slip, knit. Two, decrease one stitch there. And after this, the other extra stitch and first new cast, knit two together. There we go. Now you minimize the uh, gap. So now let's talk about decreasing sleeves. I want you to uh, find out, number one, your current stitch count. I have 61 stitch total. And also, I want you to find out your target stitch count at the bottom of the wrist before the rib. And I wrap it around and count. And I would like to have 52 stitches, which is multiple of four. And I will find out the length that I want to knit from now to before rib and 12 inches. Those three numbers I want you to find out. And let's move on to my math template. All right? Okay, so we came back to math template. Okay, I found out my cast on number and target increasing, blah, blah, blah. Now, I want to find out how to decrease for the sleeves, right? So, keep the, uh, your swatch and gauge right here, same as before, right? Now, uh, let's find out how many um, rows I have to knit from now, okay? I have target length, which is 12 inches. And then I want to find out the, uh, you know, row count. So let's look around here. Find out the length from row count. Find out length from stitch count. No, no, no. I already know the, uh, the length. So right here, find out row count from length. This is the one. And I have 12 inch desire length. So 12. And this is orange. So let's go orange. Here, 90 rows I have to knit. Okay? Remember that. And just leave that number. And here, sleeve. Current stitch count. There you go. 61, right? I have. And my goal stitch count, 52, which is multiple of four, easier, right? Later on to do rib. And stitch you will decrease on the row. Two stitches decrease, same time. And enter, okay? The length you want to knit, Find out the row you have to knit. The current stitch count, goal stitch count, and how many decrees. And let's go check here. 
sleep, decrease. There you go. 20, how often you decrease. Right here, 90 rows. Total decrease stitches, 9 stitch. 61 minus 52 is 9. And 2. So here's the one. Okay? So every 20 row, you have to decrease. Oops. 2. And 60th row, 2. And 82. And then 91. Did you get that? So 20th row, 40th row, 60th row, 80th row, 2, 2, 2, 2 decrease. But this is only 8 stitch. So 90th row, the last row, I am going to decrease only one. That's how you figured it out. Okay, so let's go back to actual knitting. Okay, so now I found out how to decrease. According to my math, I decrease two stitch every 20th row. And then one stitch on 90th row. So just keep knitting around and around and around. Meet you at the end of 19th row because soon as you start knitting nine 20th row i'm gonna decrease right away so here it is this is end of 19th row and again right on the 20th row i am going to decrease one stitch right away so here it comes slide the marker and right after that and just before you finish the 20th row, I'm going to decrease one more time. So knit one stitch right after the beginning marker. Yarn back, slip one purlwise, and knit next one, and PSSO. Pass, slip stitch over, and one stitch down. And meet you just before the marker. All right? Okay, so knit until last three stitch. And here it comes. Quite easy. Last three stitch. First of all, knit two together to decrease one stitch, then knit last one. That's it. And keep knitting again until 40th row, 60th, 80th, something like that. And I just finished. The, the last one decrease, you can do SSK or knit two together, whatever. And the rib, I change the needle and repeat off knit two and purl two. My target stitch count for decreasing was multiple of four, so I don't have to adjust number quite easy and after this just bind off so let me talk about neck rib which is quite easy i just you know finished the sleeve i'm sorry i didn't you know show you everything but you know same as the body so now let's talk about the uh, you know neck and i kept the uh, the stitch for back of the neck, right? And I'm going to use that. Make sure kneading up total of multiple of four because the same, you know, as any other rib, right? So including the, uh, the, the stitch you already have, okay? Total of multiple of four. You can adjust it later. And just knit up right on the edge. But here's the thing. Knit side by side. One, two. Oops. 
two, three, right on the edge. And by the way, you're facing to right side of the uh, sweater, right? Four. Then you must skip one stitch, then starting knit one, two, three, four. Then skip one stitch space and then knit one, two, three, four. Okay? Because if you knit up too many uh, stitches, the, the neck rib standing up and a little wavy. So, you know, a little less would be nice and flat and laid. You know what I'm saying? And again, I'm not going to show you everything because it's all the same. You know, once you uh, knit up around, came back the, uh, the, the stitch you already have, which is back of your neck, just start ribbon, which is same as others. Repeat off, knit two and purl two until your desired length and then bind off. You know, my neck opening was big enough, so I didn't change the uh, needle uh, to bind off. I uh, used the uh, 3.5 millimeter to make the, uh, the um, rib and bind off. That's about it. Again, um, I actually show you the basic, basic set in sleeve sweater. You can adjust numbers. And, you know, you can um, change the, uh, the, the pattern and everything, but you need to do a little bit of math, okay? As you can see, I love the shape of the, uh, you know, the neck opening. I didn't even add the, uh, the short row to raise the, uh, the back of my neck. And the shoulder line is perfect length for me okay and then sleeve stitch count perfect and I really like the little baggy you know um, body part right it's it's quite you know nice anyway I hope you enjoyed and if you have any question let me know all right bye for now Enjoy knitting.